welcome back to a dose of Dami. So in today's video, I will be talking about my first time experience at clinicals for my fundamentals patient care two class that I took last year around October. The actual class started September, but my clinicals were in October. So yeah, um, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe down below. Hit that bell to be notified. And if you have any other requests or any other videos that you would like for me to do in the future, make sure to also comment them down below. And let's get right back to the video. Okay, so this is going to be like a little short summary of how my clinicals went. They were actually very, very well. I had three shifts. Um, so there were three Saturdays and I had a sim lab, but they were all 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Yes, 12 hour shifts. <laughs> and I'm not going to name the facility just for, you know, secure reasons, HIPAA and everything like that. But it was basically an assisted living place as well and also like a nursing home. But um, I think the different there are different floors. So one's like assisted living, one's like also like a nursing home type uh, floor as well. But yes, I did 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturdays, and we had to bring like our clinical documentation um, to fill out as well because we were able to choose patients um, depending on which floor we were on. So I was able to choose my patient, and look over their chart, and look over to see like what vital signs they needed to be ticked by me. Um, and also we had to ask certain nurses for permission as well because you know we never dealt with these patients and we're also still student nurses so we just still wanted to be cautious and aware of, to make sure that we were doing everything right. We also had to bring our stethoscopes, our clinical bags as well and the clinical bags um, also had the materials that were used for the labs at the actual Chamberlain campus but we didn't have to like take that out and stuff and use it on patients because we already used that at the lab so that wouldn't be sanitary would it <laughs> but um yes so we had to bring our stethoscopes our you know our pin lights whenever we were doing our head to toe assessments and that's one thing whenever we were um at our clinical we had to do a head to toe assessment on one patient and our clinical coordinator had to come in and watch us and thankfully I passed mine on the first time. I was very, very nervous, even though I have done head to toe so many times with some of my nursing friends just to practice. And also when I did my head to toe, my head to toe assessment at the Chamberlain campus, I did pass the first time too. But doing it on a real life human, like it was very different, but it was a very sweet elderly lady that I did it on. She was more so bed bound, so it was kind of difficult for me to, um, do more so of the musculoskeletal assessments but you know overall she was pretty well um, just more so bed bound can do as much but <laughs> y'all I was sweating <laughs> literally like throughout the whole thing I was sweating but I knew what I was doing I just it was my first time doing our life patient but the clinical coordinator said I did a very good job um, you know I was very gentle because not all elderly patients but my elderly patient, she was very, very fragile and very small, so I couldn't do too much with her. I couldn't, you know, allow her to stretch and use her, test her range of motion, basically. Um, so, yeah, but um, clinicals was really not that bad. Uh, I was able, my first week, or uh, yeah, my first week I was able to follow a medication aid as well, um, just to see like how her rounds were for the different patients that she had, um, just to make sure that she gave them their blood pressure medications, um, and any other medication that they, you know, need to use as well, like any other laxatives or, you know, because if you guys don't know, elderly patients, they do tend to have constipation. And from the elderly patients that I was seeing as well, especially the one that I had, it was more common for them to have like a laxative or some type of like, um, stool softener in their medication charts that they have to take. So they can be, be able to pass stool. Um, as well, but uh, yes, clinicals was very, very different. Walking in, it's a very nice institution. Um, it's down, you know, in the Houston area. I can't say the actual name, but it is down in the Houston area. Um, the environment is pretty different. I wasn't used to that environment. Um, outside of the clinical side, I wasn't used to the environment, so I had to, you know, make sure I was aware of my surroundings and stuff. Um, and also, I'm trying to think what else. The staff was amazing. Um, they were very, very nice, very sweet, and understandable that we were nursing students and that we wanted to just make sure to learn, you know, and take in everything that we can within that 12 hour period. Because, you know, we can do everything because, 
you know, just for safety reasons, like we can pass medications. Passing medications basically means we can give medications or administer medications to the patients because we hadn't taken pharmacology yet. Um, and that's when I took pharmacology that next session for the next eight weeks. Um, actually, no, no, no. Scratch that. I took pharmacology during while I was taking funds patient care too. So, but we still couldn't pass meds because we were still in the class. So that, that would make sense because we were still learning about all types of pharmacological actions and all types of medications. And at the end of the day, as a nurse or as a doctor, you are still learning while you are on the floor. You know, you're still learning about all types of medications because medications, there's new ones that go, that come, and then there's also ones that go. So you're learning overall in general. But yes, we were not allowed to pass any medications as well. Um, but we were able to do as much as we could. Like I said, the nursing staff was very nice. Um, they made sure that we were able to get as much experience as possible. There was this one nurse, I forgot what his name was, but I don't want to say his name in general. But he was very, really, like, really cool um, with showing us his, like, the stethoscope. I, th I think it's called like an echo, some type of stethoscope. It's one of those, like, high-tech high stethoscopes. Not your basic Littman stethoscope, like it's a high tech stethoscope where you can listen to someone's um, like heart or lung sounds, like and it's like very very clear. It's super cool. We were able to use the stethoscope on like a few patients who had like lung issues, and we were able to tell whether their lung issues were like rails, if they're any, like crackling or any whooshing sounds or anything like that. But it was really really cool, and you know just being there with the nursing, with the rest of my nursing friends and the rest of the nursing students and being able to experience that overall together was very cool in general. And then also after we finished or kind of going towards the end of the 12 hour shift, we had our um, conferences. So basically just talking about how um, our patients were, what we did, what the patient's diagnosis was, and what we saw on their charts. Um, and also furthermore, we also talked about um, how we were able to like feed certain patients, which <laughs> that was very interesting. Feeding them was very, very interesting because some of them, you know, some of them can't swallow, so we have to kind of um, be patient and let them, um, you know, take in the food slowly, not as like, you know, a regular human being would do while they're, you know, very, very hungry. But we just had to keep in mind of um, their barriers that they had, basically. Um, I'm trying to think what else that's yeah that's basically it just caring for elderly patients um, we were able to communicate with some as well and just talk to them about like how their stay was going um, and of course they had their little room so they had pictures of their family members some of them had kitchens as well so they were able if they were able to walk um, they were able to cook in there they had a whole little living room set some of them did um, and then some of them like um who were in like the assisted living section. Um, they just had like your regular like, um, I just got a text message, sorry guys. <laughs> but they just had their regular like um, hospital setting. It wasn't like a little mini apartment like their nursing homes would have been on a different floor. So yes, uh, my experience was great. To be honest guys, my last day working at that clinical site, I cried, I did. Because I made a lot of the connections, um, especially the stories I've heard from a lot of the elderly patients um, about, how, about how long they've been there and just making that connection. Like, I don't know if I would want to work in an elderly setting like that, but you know, because as, as you guys know, elderly homes or nursing homes in general, not elderly homes, but nursing homes, they have a bad rap because um, unfortunately some medical professionals don't treat the elderly um, in an appropriate way, whether that's physically, mentally, or emotionally. And a lot of um, the elderly people or elderly patients there, their daughters or their sons keep them there and they just drop them off there and they don't come and visit at all. So they're there by themselves alone in this, you know, four wall type setting where they're just being cared for by, you know, nurses who, well, they're, I'm not going to say all nurses, but nurses who just don't really care for their well-being like that and who just do whatever and they just don't live up to the quality care of how a nurse should be let's just say that so um it was just very very emotional and also 
just making me realize that I can do this. You know, whether I work in an elderly setting home or whether I work in a pediatric unit or a NICU unit, wherever I choose to go to first, which my goal is to become a NICU nurse and overall become a nurse anesthetist. But whichever specialty I do work in the future, um, I realize that I'm capable of being a nurse. Doing that, having those clinicals for those three weeks and then of course having the sim lab at Chamberlain, but having those three clinical sessions at the clinical site made me realize that I can do it. Even though, yes, I'm introverted and you know, I don't like to talk to people who I don't know the first time around. It's like, you have to get yourself out there. You have to just set that aside and know why you're there. Know that you are there to care for the patients and make sure that they are healing on a nice, consistent route, you know, whenever they first walk in or even if they've been there for a while, just to make sure that they have a smile on their face at the end of the day because it can be boring just being in a hospital setting or it can be boring just sitting there in, in a nursing home not doing much. I mean, they do have activities every now and then, but it's just not a setting where anyone wants to be in, in general. You would want to be in your own home being taken care of, right? So, yeah. Um, but that's basically my whole spill of how my first time ever having clinicals was. I will probably do some more story times of my future clinicals whenever I do go back to school in July since I am currently in postpartum mode. Um, my next specialties are adult health one and two, which is med surge, and then I'll be able to do maternal, pediatrics, complex, and then community and then I also have capstone. The capstone is basically from what I've heard from other Chamberlain students, capstone is a class where it's basically just a whole study session for the NCLEX, which is the test that you need to pass to become a licensed registered nurse. Uh, but I'm just so excited guys because as I have mentioned before in my previous video, um, I think it was about two or three videos ago that I have eight classes left so I'm really almost there. And I can't wait to share this journey with you guys um, of me finishing nursing school, graduating, becoming this amazing nurse, um, and just having an amazing support group around me. But I do thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like I said in the beginning, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe down below. Hit that bell to be notified. And if you have any other ideas for me in the future, um, just make sure to let me know down in the comments. Or um, you can chat with me through Instagram. Oh, nice through Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok as well, um, or Facebook. You know, I don't have my Facebook link down there. I probably should post it down there. But yes, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time.